Okay. Thank you. So um, welcome everybody. Um, for the sake of those who uh, are joining for the first time today, uh, my name is Tito and um, I'm leading uh, server administrators uh, attached to the University of Oslo. I'm based in Nairobi. So um, <clears throat> we, we want to continue uh, the topic that we had last week, that is um, LXD. And um, LXD is, is an engine. It's an engine that runs containers, you know. It's just another, uh, you know, it's, we have Docker. Docker is very popular. And with Docker, you run um, Docker containers uh, on top. So LXD um, is, uh, is an engine that runs Linux containers, or, or rather LXC, um, because LXC stands for Linux containers. Um, Docker containers are very slim. Uh, they they do what you want them to do. They, they, they don't have um, much packages in, in them. Uh, while LXD containers have um, libraries, it emulates um, a whole complete operating system. So last week we talked about um, how you could manage LXD containers uh, with um, LXC client. Yeah, it's a tool that interacts with the um, LXD engine uh, with um, over over the API, LSD engine exposes an API. It's exposing um, uh, over the Unix socket, or you can expose that also uh, over the network. But then, when you run LXC commands, normally from within the host, you are interacting with um, LXD engine over the API, you know, Unix socket client. Yeah. So, and that socket is sitting. Um, are you all seeing my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay. It's somewhere in uh, var uh, snap. I don't know. LXD. Let's check what is there. Somewhere, sitting somewhere here. And uh, it's when you run a command like LXC list, <clears throat> it's just using that Unix socket API to list your containers and you can manage all your containers here. You can do pretty much everything um, the surrounding um, LXD system. You can create containers, stop containers, restart containers, and you can run, you can do things within those containers. And that was demonstrated last week. Um, however, you could expose that API over the network. Uh, let me just exit from this server and do LXC remote list. And you see I have um, around six remotes. Uh, there's one for images. It's hosting images remotely and there is this local Unix. This is now the Unix socket I was, I was talking about. And so we can use this API to interact with LXD containers locally. And then there is this, which is um, connecting to an LXD server running somewhere else. I have two remotes here uh, that runs containers. One is main and another one is Optiplex. And these other two are, uh, are pretty much um, images repositories. So I could say LXC list and no, uh, nominate the, the remotes that I want, say uh, this one, and it will list containers that are running from this um, remote. If I change that to the first one that we had here, this one, it will list different containers that are running on these other remotes. Notice that they are not the same the containers running on um, different systems, different server systems. So here, 
notice that I'm, I'm connecting not locally, but over the network. My local client here is um, in this so MacBook uh, and I'm just running um, LXC clients here. It doesn't have, there's no LXC engine here. Yeah. So those are the, the, the two ways that you can interact with um, LXC exposed API. So today we want to talk about Ansible. We, it's, it's, it's offering a way also that you can manage LXD clients. And our DHIS2 server tools, um, uh, we have two versions of the, of the tools. We, have, uh, we had uh, tools that were running bash scripts and the tools that, were, that we are using Ansible to, you know, to manage our, our deployment. So the bash scripts really, if you get into the details is that it's using LXC command line within the scripts, you can, you know, if you go through the scripts, you notice that whenever um, something is, whenever we wanted to do something within the container, we, we were connecting with LXC and then uh, do things inside the container and then, you know, finish what we were doing. Yeah, that means it's using LXC client, you know, un under the hood. But with Ansible, we, we are not using LXC client. How are we connecting with Ansible? That is something that we want to talk about also today. So <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to take you through uh, our tools. The, and these are our tools. Uh, <clears throat> with these tools, you can do deploy um, and uh, DHIS2 and its uh, components you know, application stack, you know, it has um, one uh, database and then the instance itself and then other optional items like uh, proxy and monitoring, you know, you can pretty much deploy that with Ansible. So Ansible itself uh, has building blocks. It has items, things that build, uh, makes Ansible compute. And one of those things is modules, modules. Uh, I'm going to just edit one of the files that we have here. It has a list of tasks, like this one, it has a list of tasks. And um, <clears throat> on the very top is just a task, um, the name of your task. And then uh, there is that a few directives here, like become directive. Uh, you instructing um, Ansible that, within this task, the task is ending down here, you want to become, you want to elevate rights. That is the purpose of this line here. And then also you could um, define variables within that um, task. And then this one here is the module. This one here is one of the modules that I wanted to talk about. It's a building block of, uh, of Ansible. And what are the modules? The modules are really code written and they are performing particular tasks. Like this module here, its main purpose is just to create container. It's LXD container. It's used to create container and, 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 and it has so many, uh, you know, things that, you, you know, it's just creating container, but then it has um, attributes, you know, uh, that you want your, created container to have. Um, if you follow through uh, this one task here is that you could even state devices that you want for the created container. And this is just one of them. You can also say add other device that, that, uh, that you want to your, your created container to have. And you can specify where you want to get your images plus other parameters, as you can see here. So this is just one of the modules. And if we check another task here, DHS, DHS to set up the demo, is that it has so many tasks. As you can see, it's a list of, um, it's a YAML syntax uh, arranging tasks into lists. You know, this is one of the tasks, and then this is another one. And it, the list goes down, 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 down until um, I guess to the very end. And this, these all are, are tasks that um, 
are just arranged in, in um, vertical order. Mwale? Yeah, I see your hand raised. Yeah, there is uh, this question that has been, has been thinking about, you know, for a long uh -huh. time. Uh, so I know Ansible, uh -huh. it, was developed, it was developed by, by, uh, by Red Hat, right? Mm. So now, do you think uh, by any, any, any time, maybe in the future, uh, these guys from Red Hat, they might want to put, push a license on Ansible? What will happen no. to this installation no. in the future? No. Will it will remain... It will remain open source for a long time or for eternity. One is that <clears throat> Ansible is open source, and uh, major players within um, Ansible world is 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 Red Hat. Uh, they're the ones starting the, the 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 Ansible thing. But then, if you go to the to the community and and even list the modules that are currently available out there then you notice that core modules you know the very you know the core modules of ansible are are nothing compared to the community modules so it's open source it's um, it's something that is community oriented if i open another tab here and say ansible uh, ansible doc and then i want to list um type modules see we sorry type modules ansible doc and then uh, type module or you can just ansible doc and then list because it defaults to modules this will give us so many modules i can't even count and the way they are organized is that they have fully qualified module name. And um, they are, you see, the first one that we see here is, is just Amazon AWS EC2 modules. And there, there are so many, there are so many, you know, these are open sourced and they are not even developed by Red Hat, Red Hat themselves. They are developed, these are developed by Amazon AWS. And after that, we have Ansible built in here, you see. These are now the ones that comes with them with the with the default install for um, for Ansible. These are the building building modules, and after that uh, we have other uh, modules that are developed by different players. You know, like AWS here. AWS is AWS is, is you know th there's another way also you can manage Ansible using um what is Ansible Tower. You you all know Ansible Tower. It's a um, it's a um, it's a um, web interface uh, that you can interact and and manage your your Ansible host from it. You know you can log into the Ansible tower and then you can just pretty much do things in in a in an interactive manner. You don't you don't use command line right now. Our tools are using Ansible command line, but um, Ansible tower is is a tool that is developed by the, by red hat and it's it's, it's licensed you cannot it's, it's 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 under the license but then awx is the open source version of it you see here and it has modules also surrounding the same yeah so i think ansible major player major players that do develop ansible are red hat and they it is something that it's it's a, um outsource it's an open source anybody that wants to develop their staff on top of ansible can do that and that is why you are able to see all these modules that we have right now here. And the list goes on and on. Like in our tools, the modules that we use are community general modules. Uh, let me just try and see if I can community general. Yeah, these are the modules that we are leveraging, that we are using. Um, and these modules are developed by community. They're, they're not even um, hooked to Red Hat themselves. They just give you the, um, the core utilities, but then everything else that you want to do, you can do yourself. Okay, uh, I think that's enough. Uh, it, at least we should be sure that we are safe then. That, uh, can you uh, confirm that we are okay for the next generation? using ansible yeah good thing is right now ansible is open source too it's not proprietary yeah 
Uh -huh. So the, the, when we were at that, um, at that at, at your question, we were able to see, I mean, you know, you know modules that are available for us uh, because we were talking about modules. So when we get back to this, you see uh, Ansible's built-in set back, you know, set, uh, set fact, it's, it's a built-in module, meaning it comes with the, with the initial install of Ansible. And um, one of the modules that I can use to demonstrate what, what modules mean, what, what we talk about, when we talk about module, what we mean is the act module. Normally, uh, when you're setting up something, uh, say on, on a Linux system, or on a Red Hat system, you manage your packages pretty much with apt, right? And you just get into that instance and then you, you issue commands, say sudo apt update, for, just to make sure that your packages are updated and then sudo apt upgrade, making sure that your, your updated packages are now, you know, you get the latest versions and then you, you issue, uh, sudo apt update and then your, your, your package name, whatever you want to install. It can be say um, Tomcat 9 or, or something that you, you, you are dealing with. And that pulls the package from the apt repository and it installs into your system. So this task, task here that you, um, I've, I've just highlighted is using the same um, apt module. And you just give the name of the more of the of the apt packages that you want to install. And this is a list. You can just have it this way, or you could even make it nicer uh, by uh, saying that the modules that I want to install are name, name, name. You just give name. This takes a list, you know, a list of items that you want to, to install. And, and then you put your list here, like now and zip. And then another one is uh, Tomcat 9. And then another one is um, Tomcat 9 um, admin, you know, something like this. This, it, it does the same thing. It does the same thing. It, you can, mine is just um, uh, done within single line, but you can put, put it this way. It also will work. So, it will use apt module and then the name of the packages that you want to install. And then it will just iterate through the list and install all those packages that you want, okay? But then this is just another version that you could um, make this look like, yeah. So this is another um, module here, it's called file module. And they are, the reason why you see them very simple, that they just uh, portrayed very, in a very simple way is that they are Ansible built-in modules. Otherwise, another way you can write this is uh, like this, Ansible built-in apt. This is the fully qualified uh, collection name. You, you just mean, uh, you, you just um, uh, portraying it, writing it in a way that it has fully qualified um, collection name. Otherwise you could just write it this way and it will work because it is a built-in module. This way you can also make this look like this, Ansible built-in file, and it will work. So uh, for the building built-in modules like uh, file here, apt here, and even start here, you don't have to specify fully qualified collection name. But then there are other modules that are, sorry. There are other modules that are not built-in. Like for instance, the one that we check in a few seconds, this one is not is not a built-in module. That's why you we you need to really define the fully qualified collection name that it is a um, it, it's from con community collection and you know community general LXD container. Yeah, yeah, okay. So that is one of the building blocks of Ansible modules. Then another one is connection. You know. One of the reasons why we want we wanted to have tools that that's using Ansible is because of the connection. Our bash scripts that we had before can deploy DHIS two instance. It's fifteen hours. But from within the same host, 
What if you are, you are in an environment where you have a database running on its own dedicated server or a virtual machine, you have proxy sitting somewhere else, you have um, application server sitting somewhere else, and also um, monitoring server sitting somewhere else. And then you are given um, a central server, in Ansible we call it um, controller, and you're told that we want you to deploy DHS2 and you have these components over the network, you will not be able to use your, I mean, our bash kit in, in that scenario. And that is where Ansible comes in. It supports connection. It supports different connections. You know, one is SSH. That if you are on an environment like that, you can connect to these components with SSH and then do things on those um, instances, but over SSH. Or you are sitting on a server, you want to deploy DHIS2 application stack, and you want to deploy your DHIS2 from just into that host. You don't even want to deploy DHIS2 within container, you just want to deploy DHIS2 into that host, you know, boom box. And in that scenario, you use local connection. That means wherever, wherever connections that you are making, it's to the local host. You don't connect to something that is sitting somewhere. Or you could even connect to LXD instance. You could even connect to the, 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 the LXD um, engine with Ansible. That is what we, 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 we are advocating, that whenever you are setting up your LXD in a host, you use LXD containers. That is the third uh, connection. And also Docker, it supports a, a connection plugin that enables you to interact with um, Docker instances so that you can spawn uh, any, any Docker container name that you want, and then you do things within that container. And we could even list um, supported uh, connection plugins with Ansible, um, sorry, Ansible, uh, doc and then list we are listing we just want to list and then of type connection and this is a list of connection plugins that are supported the very first one is local local connection plugin see and you see as i said here and i know docker is somewhere here and there's also http api you know, you can connect to an HTTP API endpoint and, and do stuff with Ansible. It's something that I'm, 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 I'm currently uh, even working on with, with, um, with Zabbix because I want to, to enable users um, support, uh, you know, my tools. I want my tools to support uh, Docker monitoring, you know, um, Zabbix monitoring. Right now we are using Union and we want to explore how we can uh, incorporate Zabbix into our tools. And here is LXD. This is the one that is enabling us to interact with um, LXD hosts. You see LXD here. It's not, it's not even the only way you could, you could, you could interact with LXD uh, host. You can also use LXD if you want. And if you, if you have Kubernetes, you can use uh, kubectl also. You know? Docker, uh, you know, you can manage uh, Podman containers. Oh, Pod, Podman is, is Kubernetes, sorry. You can manage when you have Pod, Podman connection plugin. And all these other, other connection plugins are, are supported. So uh, right now our tools are supporting three connection plugins. That is LXD, um, local and SSH. If we just, see what we have with uh, lxd.yaml task. See here uh, that we, we are instructing this, this particular task that connection plugin that we want to use is local. Because when you are creating a container, you are just creating it within the, the local host that you are sitting on. 
That is why you, you're not connecting anywhere. You're just sitting on that host and you are creating um, a container. Okay. But other things that runs, you know, to do things within containers, like apt update, apt, and pretty much things that you do, even our task here uh, I, I, is using, is using um, LSD plugin. It's using LSD uh, connection to interact with those containers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that is another thing that you could um, pick, have a discussion around, um, around. Uh, Ansible. And, and there's a variable that uh, we are enabling users to decide which connection plugin they want, they want to use. It's not something um, hard coded. You could, uh, you could change within uh, inventory host. Uh, there's, there's where there's, a, there's, there's um, a variable here where you can define the type of connection that you want to use. It's called down uh, LXD connection. Here and, and we, we, we are here, as you can see. So this connection plugin, this is the default. We want to support LSD by default. We are assuming that you are setting up your own infrastructure within, uh, within a single host and, and that host will be having containers. Otherwise you could change this to SSH. And in future we want to include Docker and even other things that comes along the way, okay? Yeah, something else that we want to talk about that comes when you when you are um, talking about Ansible is is inventory. What is inventory? Hmm. Inventory is is a list of of servers. Uh, you know, uh, with Ansible you can manage. Uh, uh, you, you know, you can manage a, a long list of servers, and um, uh, and those servers are defined within the in, um, an inventory file. Those list of servers are defined within the, in the, the inventory, an inventory file. So this is our inventory here, as you can see. And at the very top here, <clears throat> up to this line, is a list of servers. And they, they are grouped. We have web servers grouped under, under uh, that. And then you have database servers, and then you have instances. These are DHS2 application instances. You know, we create containers running particular instance and then monitoring. For monitoring, monitor, monitoring, we are using Union right now, but in future we want to add also subjects. It's something that I'm working on right now. Uh, down these files are just variables, you know. You could um, divide, define your variables within the inventory file. And there are so many way, many other places that you could define your variables in, in Ansible. And let me just uh, get to this directory. Yeah. You see, this is a list of, of places you could you could define your variables in. And um, we, we, we in, in our standard install, we do group Ansible variables within one location that is um, inventory file. But there are so many other places like more than 23 other places that you could define your variables, okay? But we want to, have them uh, done on uh, on a single file here, in inventory host file. We have it open here. Yeah. And then there are filters. Filters uh, is is just an Ansible way that enables you to manipulate data. When, when you are running your playbook. Like for instance here, 
uh, you have AMD64, you have variables that are true or, 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 or false, like this one create DB, it's yes, it's either yes or no, you know. And you want these variables to, to always be a, bu a, 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 a boolean. You want it to be either true or, or, or false, always, you know. And for you to do that, you can use a bool, a bool filter. Let me just see where I've used that. And here, here we are. You see here, we have this variable, it's create database. But then we want to ensure that, that created, um, this variable that we have here is always, is always a true or a false. You know, we want to make sure that it's a Boolean all the time. So this is a filter. It's enabling you to manipulate your, your data. And filters is also being used with uh, Ninja2 template. We could spend a whole hour talking about Ansible filters. And let's see if we can list even things, uh, Ansible doc. Uh, I don't know if you have type filters. Uh, we have type filters, Ansible uh, doc of type filters. And then you can just uh, uh, list. Yeah, see, we have so many filters. Filters help, helps you manipulate uh, data as you are running your playbooks. Okay. Yeah. And then um, finally, there, there are others, other things like um, tests, tests, you know, that you could use with Ansible. We can talk about that in future. Yes. But right now, I want to just give you a a brief uh, demonstration on how you could um, create LXD containers with Ansible. And then um, after creating those containers, you can um, do things within those containers. It is what we are doing with our, with our Ansible scripts. We are creating containers and then we do things inside those containers, which is installing uh, Postgres when we are dealing with Postgres container, installing Tomcat 9 when, when we are dealing with um, Tomcat container. Right? Any question up to that point? Hello, Tito. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, this is Ingo. Uh, actually, uh, thank you for taking us through. Uh, but I've been having a hard time to mm. uh, connect the files. Uh, I think that's uh, one of the most uh, that I'm getting hard. Like, and when before when we use the LXD, we we are shown we are being shown that this file connects here and when it may be include this file going to that file, you're going to read the certain this command and the storage. So you can precisely recall that uh, after when uh, one line is going to uh, go to another line, maybe which is going to look for another file. So I was also trying uh, hard to know in Asibo, is this also working that way? Because I've been in some parties and the Probably would, we might like to look to those files to see uh, what your content that are there. Hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. That is what happens with Ansible also. When you, I'm, I'm, I'm actually sitting on, on my project directory here, as you can see. And within this project directory, there is Ansible uh, configuration file here, Ansible CFG. Within this file, you can instruct Ansible where you have your playbooks. You can instruct Ansible where you have your roles. I've not even talked about roles, you know. And the ma main playbook that we run here is dhs2.yaml. It's just few few contents of dhs2.yaml. This is the playbook that you run and it, it, it deploys dhs2 application stack for you. And, it, and, and as you can see, it is grouped into, into roles. You see, there is a role that deals with Postgres, and then there is a role that deals with DHS2, and then uh, the last two are proxy and monitoring. These last two roles is gonna set up proxy for you. It's not uh, mandatory, it's optional. Maybe you have your proxy configurations managed somewhere else, and you just want to run 
your application server here, then you don't have to you don't have to run this kind of role. And then there is also monitoring. Maybe you have your already established monitoring infrastructure in your environment, and you just want to do that manually, then you don't need to include this role. So roles is, is just a way of grouping in, uh, tasks that are related to one another. Like here, we have Postgres role. These are tasks that are related in a way that, you know, it surrounds setting up Postgres, connecting to that Postgres instance, either with NXT or SSH and installing Postgres from, you know, maybe you can just even check what is really happening within this uh, Postgres um, instance. Yeah, what, what is Postgres role doing? And these roles are within a uh, roles directory, you know, you, 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 within uh, it is the default path that you could, you know, potentially put dump your roles. If you get to roles directory and list contents here, we have this. So Ansible by default from the, the project directory knows that I am to look for uh, the roles from within this directory. And then whatever you have in your main playbook, like this one, uh, uh, just run in this order. Like you, the first things that runs are surrounding Postgres role. And then after that, when that is complete, it gets to DHIS2 role, you know, and to proxy and finally to monitoring. The, the, this order is not to be, you know, you cannot today decide that you want to have this on top like here because your DHIS2 role depends on, 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 having, on having Postgres container setup. Unless you had instructed your, your DHS2 setup not to, you know, create, uh, uh, sorry, not to use uh, this database here. You want to use some database running elsewhere. But then if you, you, you're you going to be using a database defined here, then it means your Postgres role needs to come first because that way it's going to connect to Postgres. Your Ansible is going to connect to your Postgres instance, create a database. If you, 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 your create database uh, variable is true, then it will create database there and then create database role. And then um, uh, that role is gonna have a username and password. And, and when, once that is set up, plus even the, block, the plugins that we normally support in our, in our standard DHS2 installation, it will create all those. And then after that, it goes to creating your DHS2. And, in, and at that moment, it, uh, the, the, the the, the database is already set up. It's just waiting for connections. And then thirdly is proxy. Once you have your, 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 your DHIS2 set up co correctly, everything works well, and Postgres is set up and it works well, uh, you can now move on to proxy because uh, proxy at the end of the day is connecting to your instances. And your instances are connecting to Postgres. So it follows the dependency, uh, like the, your DHS2 role is depending on Postgres. So Postgres needs to come first and then DHS2 next and then proxy, you know, and, and finally monitoring because monitoring is gonna be hooking to proxy instances. It's gonna be connecting to DHS2. You want to manage, you want to monitor all these instances. So that's why it comes last, you know. Otherwise, if this one comes first and you don't have your, your containers that that runs Postgres, DHS2, and Proxy, you know, it will fail because it, it wants to connect to those instances. So that's why it comes last on this, uh, on this list. And then we get to one of the roles, say theme, Postgres, sorry, theme, roles, Postgres, uh, task, and then um, main. This is the main, main is, is, is actually the, is, is the file that Ansible, files within the role, it, it doesn't see other files. It's, it sees the main. And then within the main, you call other, other, other files now. You call other files within the main, like this on Postgres install.yaml, you're including other tasks within the main, the main. And, 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 and it follows this order, okay? It follows this order that you define, that it will, it will uh, include tasks specific to the connection that you used. And then after that, it's, these are the common tasks you see Postgres installed. We, we, wherever the connection that you are using, there are things that needs to happen. That is Postgres SQL installation. You, even if you're using 
connection uh, as I said, or connection LXD, you need to install Ansible, uh, sorry, you need to install um, Postgres there, you need to sort of up the update and then install those packages and run tasks within that uh, instance, irrespective of whether it's a container or, or a dedicated host. Those are, these are the common tasks. And then the first tasks here are very specific to the type of connection that you're using. This is, um, this is a variable. You know, we can talk about variables and, and the way you can call variables in another call because we are calling multiple connection variable here. It's a way that we are including, uh, we are including uh, uh, task dynamically. You know, not every, because if you go to this directory here that we're talking about, we are, I just edited right now here, is just get into that directory and list content. We have lxd.yaml and then you have ssh.yaml. So if your Ansible connection is SSH, then this playbook is gonna be included. You see, and it has things. Sorry, if I said SSH instead of LXD. If your Ansible connection is LXD, this playbook is gonna be called. And these are the th things that are specific to, they are very specific to the um, LXD connection that if your connection is LXD, then you need to create container. This is why this task here, LXD uh, container create. And then after that, it does some few other tasks within that container. Otherwise, if your Ansible connection is SSH, then this, this is gonna be called in that order. And these are the things that I wanna do with, um, with the remote host that I'm connecting with SSH. See, notice that I want to uh, enable firewall, but before that I enable um, SSH be be, be port 22, this is the default. Otherwise it needs to check as a set port variable. Otherwise, if, if that is not defined, then it's using the default, which is 22. Okay. So these tasks are executed in the order uh, that your playbook are, is actually calling them. And there is dependencies. Okay. I don't know if that answers your question. Yes, yes, uh, a little bit. I think I'll be having, uh, I need to take my time to go through uh, each and then okay. familiarize uh, the order because I think uh, the most important here, what I have seen is uh, you need to know the order which needs to be executed the first and uh, which needs to be executed the last. That's the most important. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Let's because I see time is moving very fast. Let's just jump through the, the the demonstration real quick so that things that we are doing here would at least make sense. I'm going to SSH to my local host here, local server running here, and then I have um, some few playbooks here. I'm going to delete this test container. Let's see, remove test. And then we're going to speed it up with Ansible. I'm going to use, um, we have two playbooks here. Uh, one is create container, see this. Uh, and on very top of it, we have var prompt. It's going to prompt us to supply the, the container name. And then it's going to prompt us uh, to supply the containers IP address, you know, they want that, whatever that we want. And then, um, but then notice that within this var prompt, there are defaults. If you don't do anything, you just press enter, then it's gonna default to DHS2. It's gonna default to uh, default container name DHS2. And if you don't do anything also, it's gonna default to the IP address 1.30. This is another way of defining your variables. Uh, var prompt, it's, it's, it's prompting user to supply variables during the, the play runtime. And then we have vars. These are variables that you want to statically, you know, you, you want to force them to, you're defining them statically here. That Ansible connection is gonna be local. And then your network is this, you know, it's just for demonstration purposes. Otherwise I have set up network prior to this call, you know, and Ansible, I have, I have initiated my, uh, my um, LXD environment and it's using this network, you know? And then notice that uh, even within this, I am doing some, some I'm adding some other uh, Dinga2 functions that 
that uh, gives me a gateway out of the out of the LXD network, you know, and things like name here is taking a variables that we just defined here. We said um, this is container name. It's prompting us to supply container name, and this is where it starts being used within the same playbook. And also IP address. This is a prompt that we got here. IP address, and it's gonna use it down here. Yeah. So if we run this, Ansible playbook create container dot yaml, you see it's prompting me to to give container name. I can say server server admin. If I don't supply name here, it should default to DHS2. And then it asks me for the IP address. Notice that it defaults to the 30, but then you can put something else, say um, 80. And then it should create my container based on these details that I supplied here. Okay, So it's creating container now. So we are not using LXC here. LXC command line tool, but we're using Ansible. And you see now container is created. And if I do LXC list, we see uh, server admin container is created and it has the address that we just uh, supplied here. So this is really what's happening within my Ansible scripts. I'm creating containers with, um, uh, with, 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 uh, with this module. This module here, it's called uh, Ansible Community General LXD. This is the module that is helping you to create container. And you are delegating to localhost. And these are much more things that you can, you can do with Ansible. And one of them is delegate to that you want this task to run within my local, local computer. I'm not connecting anywhere to, con to create container. I'm just connecting to myself to create this, co uh, this container. Okay, so container is created now. Server admin container is created, but then in my you know in our scripts we want to do things within that container. We want to install Tomcat nine. We want to install Postgres, for instance. We want to, we want to install Munin and so many other things. We want to run firewall, you know. Yeah. So this is another another role that I, another task that I have here. I'm playing that I have here. Install packages. This one here. So we have this. It going to install Tomcat 9, for instance, for, for, for demonstration, Tomcat 9. And notice that connection that we are having here is LXD. Now it's not just local, it's LXD. Within, within that, this very specific task, we are using LXD. So you can argue also that up here we have local connection, but that is defined, you know, the way Ansible works is that variables that are defined within a task are going to override, they are going to, you know, override Ansible that are defined on top of the play, you know, on the play level. These are the task specific variables, they take lead. So if I just try is accessing this endpoint on my browser right now, the Tomcat endpoint 8080, it's nothing. There's not that service is not listening. It's it's not installed, so to speak. But then after running this against, I want to delegate to this. You see, I delegated to host before, but I want to delegate to server admin container and run Ansible playbook install packages. Yeah, this is connecting to our Tomcat container. Sorry, our server admin container, and it's installing Tomcat nine. That is what we do to our containers with the, with the Ansible scripts. We are installing things and even adding security, running uncomplicated firewall within containers, exposing all the DOS ports that we want to be exposed from those containers. Okay? Another security adding that we do within our Ansible scripts. With Ansible, you can interact with the firewall. You can pretty much interact with everything within, within your host, including the files. You can uh, uh, you know, instruct uh, with Ansible tasks that you want some file to be owned by some user. 
and 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 then what happens to the group access to that file? What happens to other you know other uh, others access to that file? You can also instruct Ansible that you want those pretty uh, defined you know in detail permission defined in detail for for a file. You can you can do that with Ansible, and it's done. So right now, if I go to my browser and access 8080, it works. It means we have uh, Tomcat installed on that instance. Yeah. This is just for demonstration, but in, in production environment, we install Tomcat. We, 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 we even disable this page, you know, the default uh, uh, Tomcat uh, page. And then we, we get, uh, we, we do pretty much so many things. It's a custom kind of uh, con customly configured uh, Tomcat instance that suits our environment. So the first task that we did here is just creating container. And the second one is doing things within that container. And we've just installed uh, Tomcat 9 and, and it's worked. OK. So today we, we've just checked uh, Ansible, LXD, and had a very brief demonstration on how, how it works. Unless uh, the, the time is up, we, we can take a few questions and then we can you can call it a day. So that's the thing. Okay. Right. You're breaking. <laughs> Hello. Do you guys hear him well? Ah, uh, personal. I can't hear him. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not hearing him. Yeah, Tito, any, can any, I, if we can yes. uh, have like this record and go back because it's too much uh, information in a very few, very limited time. Mm -hmm. So for me, it would be better if we can have like kind of record or if maybe you have PPT, we can go back and try to to to, to learn more or to master what you have. Mm -hmm. uh, you have shown that. Uh -huh. Yeah, we, we, before we started this call, we, we recorded uh, we recorded our, our sessions. Uh, they're, they're going to be uploaded into you to YouTube. Yeah. Yes. So um, I want us to just, we can even repeat sessions like this, talking about Ansible, every, every, I mean, every now and then, until we, all of us really understand what really happens behind the scenes. And, and, and um, generally speaking, it's just creating container and then doing things within those containers. That is what we are doing with our installed scripts. And those are the, the major things that I have, um, demonstrated within uh, this very short uh, time. Hmm. Any comments? Uh, for me, no comments. I think it needs a more of a practicing uh, because as uh, the previous uh, said, it has a lot of uh, to learn of uh, uh, of a few, a few times. Mm -hmm. I think we need to do more practice on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. What, what do you want us to talk about next week? Uh, yeah, of course, I remember in one of the suggestions that I said earlier that uh, we have been doing this uh, server and they probably come up with the, some automated script uh, to help us uh, quickly set up the DHS tool. Uh, but one mm -hmm. thing I think that's very important that you have to look at is how we can do it uh, in, the, in, the, in the offline. Uh, like taking, taking an, uh, an example that you are, you are going to a country that is totally offline. Maybe there is internet restriction, you can't access what. 
it's like you have to prepare something and then when you come and you go there you just plug it and then it it's one i think that's the another important thing uh, that we like, might need also to also okay we, we can talk about that next week i have something to talk about around that we we want to talk about what do we do in a gapped environment even with ansible and lxd i'm gonna talk about that but with ansible and lxd or just lxd you know and i'm gonna talk yeah. about how you could set up dhis2 within a container and then and then export that container into a file and then you, you you work with it either in a flash disk and then you can just uh, log into the other server with a very fresh environment and just import that image and it will have your your old setup of dhis2 you don't need to install anything it has your packages it's just like uh you you work with your working dhis2 instance within a flash disk bundled into an lxc container Because if it is on your laptop and you can access to that server, you can just copy that file over SSH and just import as a container. And if you had set it up to have all those packages, it will just be having all those packages again. Is it not so? No, so, so I think Tito, what, what the question yeah. that he is asking, I think that that- There are gap environments. He's talking about a, a, a gap environment, right? Where you don't yeah. have internet. Say for instance, yes, yes. Uh, I, I log into this instance, okay? As a search, uh, 172.30.30. But, uh, sorry, dot, dot thirty, And I do NXC list. This is a working DHS2 instance. Do we all agree, right? And it's a yes. container. I can export this mm -hmm. container here, as you can see, and import it in an environment where there's no internet. And it, it will have all my top time packages. It will have all my everything. I can export this Postgres right here and, and, and import it somewhere else where there is no internet. Mm. And, and it should work. Um, Why not? OK. So, so Tito, what, what we are saying now, uh, let's say, for instance, you have a desktop, right, which is totally offline, and you've, you've, uh, you've um, um, exported these containers and you want to import it. So you basically yeah. have to, like, install the LXC in the uh, local one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, have I have assumed something. I have assumed that your yeah your that's exactly as, because you, you as an xt setup mm. yeah but but also i know i have actually used before that i mean the iso image the iso image that has much packages that on a very remote environment you mount that iso image and then you you install your packages from that iso image i've used that before so but the then you ISO need to prepare image that Okay, you have to prepare the ISO image of the yeah. LA, the, the, the Oh, okay, okay. That's exactly yeah, what you prepare, I you, you prepare your ISO image that has your packages. It has your Tomcat packages. It has your Postgres packages. It has your, you know, pretty much applications or rather the packages that you want when you're setting up DHS2. And then you mount it on that remote server. And then you you use or rather you, you install your packages from that iso image i've used that before that's yeah, another I way i think that, that 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 answers his question because that exactly yeah. what he, he, mm -hmm. the next thing he might ask now is how how do we create those isos in each row mm -hmm. okay 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 yeah it's a good it's a it's an interesting topic to to talk about also Also, there is SSH, how we, you can add an SSH, you know, something that we can also talk about. So I think we can, we can, uh, hello, come up. Yes, yes, so I have my, my own question was that we, uh, with the Ansible, we, uh. 
the installation, uh, the web server that we have was and the uh, NGX. Well, I don't mm. know if the Apache two is now working because I it saw is. Your screen. This is working it is. now. Oh. Yeah, it is working now. Yeah. When we had yeah. our initial uh, multiple tool setup before, you remember the, the time that I demonstrated how you could set up yeah. the HS2 with Ansible. At that yeah. time, we didn't have, um, the, the, the Apache module was not was not working then. But then I have, I have actually completed developing it and it works right now. Uh, so within this, let's search, uh, sorry, we, to repost, there is proxy. Proxy, proxy. Yes, I yeah. saw it in the script. I saw it. So the now, yeah, now even my my install scripts right now are using Apache two because I was testing. Otherwise, before we were using Nginx. Mm. I'm also thinking of uh, something like H H uh, proxy. It's another proxy that's out there and it's very robust. <laughs> Yeah. And right now you don't have to give full path of your of your DHIS2 dot WAR file. You, you can just give the fashion. As long as you have internet internet connection, it will pull the release file and then it will choose the version that you want. You can even change this to 239 and it will install your latest version. Right? So it's pretty much looking simple for the for the end user. However, you could, um, if you don't want to use version and you have your own file, then you can say DHS2 you can say DHS2 WAR file and give path to where you have your 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 DHS2 file. Yeah, the, for the cases of custom med, uh, uh, you, you 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 build your custom DHS2 .war and you want to deploy it, then you can just put it here. Like you want to deploy your DHS2 from custom Wi-Fi. Yeah. Otherwise, for the most use cases of public use cases, they want to just deploy DHS2 instance uh, developed from University of Oslo, and they can just define the fashion that they want, and boom, they get that. This this goes up. This goes up as in you cannot you cannot deploy uh, 239 and then take it back to 237 later on. No. Because it, you can deploy 237 and then you go to 38, or you can only upgrade, so to speak. Okay. Yeah. So I think uh, we can stop at that point today. Yeah. What do you so, think? So we, yes, yes. I think this is fine. Can we have both videos? Because I was I even searching for your video, uh, so that I can. Okay, I'll, I'll ask. I'll ask. I'll ask our uh, our channel manager, the one who's okay. managing the HS two channel, to to get all those videos uh, to the to the to the to the channel. Yeah. Okay. But then they they, they are recorded. They are, we have offline files that that can just be uploaded to that um, channel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thanks. thanks thank you. Thank, thank you for joining and, and please inform others to just be available on this call so that we can talk about so many things, so many other things. You can even uh, talk about Linux basic uh, administration, you can, how you can navigate here and there within a, ve a very fresh install of Linux. Sure, sure. Thank you. I hope next time we'll be too many. Okay. Thank you for also. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.